Oklahoma producers know moisture is essential to a successful crop and of course the bottom line. Today, setup videographer Ed Barron shows us ways to use water more efficiently. Uh, we use several different types of irrigation methods on our farm here. Uh, we've had furrow irrigation since the 1950s due to water efficiency usage and other issues we're looking at more efficient ways and so over the years we've adapted uh, some overhead sprinkler or, or pivot that doesn't always fit rectangular fields well and we have also adapted started adapting subsurface drip irrigation in the last decade uh, which shows a lot of promise in many areas. When it comes to deciding about installing or purchasing a subpivot system versus a subsurface drip system uh, growers need to keep in mind all the requirements of a subsurface drip system. The initial cost is usually two to three times larger than a center pivot system on an acre basis. But at the same time, uh, subsurface drip systems are assumed to be more efficient than pivot systems. As we switched over to these other forms of irrigation, it's presented both challenges and opportunities. Our preferred method of irrigation is definitely drip irrigation, but it does have a lot of challenges and it's very expensive. We spent a lot of money in the pivot. The pivot worked fine for seven, eight years. We switched over this past year and put subsurface drip irrigation in. We had to lose some land that was in pasture, but we gained back our corners. Our, our acreage increased slightly, acres covered. Water usage is very similar, but we got rid of all the surface erosion in the pivot tracks. So pivot irrigation has its benefits, but so does subsurface drip irrigation. They both have trade-offs. The subsurface drip system requires a significant filtration unit to ensure that we remove all the suspended material out of the water. It also requires maintenance as far as uh, biological growth, because you could have biological growth and also some uh, sedimentation um, in the tubes and that needs to be taken care of by, by flushing and by also injecting acid. So uh, these are some of the things that growers need to keep in mind when thinking about subsurface drip irrigation and that's one of the reasons that the initial cost is larger because we need that filtration system. So we bring, collect all our water to one point, filter it, treat it, add nu nutrition if we're going to, and then send it back out to the different zones across all the fields. In some areas, uh, there could be significant uh, damage from rodents to subsurface drip systems. There are some products out there that have some chemicals embedded in them that um, manufacturers claim that would deter rodents, um, but it's, it's something to keep in mind because they may not be um, a 100% successful under variable conditions. I spend a lot of money on gopher bait, putting in and then digging up leaks and patching them and repairing them. It's nice and manageable, but it is, it takes a lot of management and labor to, to keep the system maintained and operating at efficient levels. With the subsurface drip, as we mentioned, it's got a higher initial cost. So that's something to keep in mind. But if the system is to be operated over a long time, like lar longer than 15 years, it can easily pay for itself and be more profitable than a center pivot system if it's maintained and used. I think if you're looking at making a decision between pivot and drip, you need to do a lot of homework. Go talk to some farmers that actually have hands-on experience and be ready to take a lot of notes based on what they've experienced or they've learned with those two different systems.